right, we are getting to our first person who's going to come out here. Uh, he's going to do a little set for you. He was in the New Faces competition at Comedy Works last summer, which is no slouch. How many, are there any stand-up comedians in the audience? Or perhaps want to be someday? Not a single one. <laughs> well, th there's no competition for you tonight. I was going to... Uh, the New Faces is a very hard... Comedy Works, in general, is hard to get booked, even for like a three to five minute slot. So to get into the New Faces, I believe they start with less than 20 and... Just five? They start with just five, and he was one of the five. So that's very impressive. Uh, he was born in New York, but got smart very young and moved to Colorado as a child. And he's, uh, he's here now for you. Say hello to John Corelli, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How are you, my friend? Have fun tonight, huh? Thank you, Pierre. Uh, thanks for all coming out. We got any uh, men that shave down here? Really? Atlantis? We don't have any men that shave down there. Well, will somebody work with me and tell me that they shaved in there? All right, thanks. I appreciate it. So you're gay. <laughs> I know. That's what you get for playing along. No, no. Ladies and gentlemen, he's obviously bisexual. Wait a minute. It's Lanny's. Everyone's gay and bisexual, right? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Hells yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of gay, if two lesbians are doing the 69, would you call that the carpet exchange? <laughs> um, I've been watching uh, reruns of the original Star Trek. Yes, a lot of Trekkies out there. I love it. Um, gl glad you're still around. Um, and this particular episode was wonderful because, uh, you know, as, all, as every episode opens, you know, they beam down to the planet with the usual suspects. You got Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy, some poor fourth bastard that's going to die within five minutes of them touching the planet's surface. So they, so they get down there, and they run into these, uh, there's people down on the planet, which is kind of surprising. And one of the people is this woman that Dr. McCoy was in love with 10 years previously. And he starts getting all smitten, and his feelings are welling up, and he can't work his tricorder right, and he's fucking up the readings on the planet. And so uh, Captain Kirk starts getting a little irritated. And uh, Captain Kirk's like, you know, Bones, you really need to stop thinking with your glands and do your job. Has there been a more hypocritical sentence uttered in the history of the universe than Captain Kirk telling somebody else not to think with their glands? The reason they had to go on the five-year mission is because Kirk done fucked everybody on the Enterprise. They popped from planet to planet just looking for more life forms for Kirk to fuck. The, uh, the mission statement should have read, to seek out new life and new civilization, to boldly fuck what no man has fucked before. Yeah, uh, you know, it didn't matter. Do you remember when the episode when he had sex with a green woman? Yeah, see, thank you. Yeah, um, you know, it didn't matter. Scales, horns, fur, fangs, fit out a heart in a hole, Kirk would fuck it. <laughs> thank you, Captain Kirk fans. <laughs> and I like, I like old 60s and 70s TV because it reminds me of times with my father. And I don't know if any of you, you that were my age remember this, but my dad used to just take me for a ride Probably just to get away from my mom. But, you know, we'd just go for rides for no reason, no, no destination. And I got little glimpses into my dad's anger management issues. Yeah, uh, we go driving, uh, stop at a red light. There's a guy already at the red light. We get behind him. We're waiting. Light turns green. The guy didn't take off in front of us. Like, we were abandoning our fucking speedway spin out. <laughs> my dad get all impatient. It's fucking green. It's fucking green. By the time I was six years old, I thought fucking was a shade of green. And now my dad's married to my stepmom, and she's a piece of work. She's what I call a religion dropper. Yeah. First time I met her, she didn't even fucking say hi, right? She's just like, hi. Well, I guess she did say hi. In this, in this particular example. <laughs> Fuck. Hi. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm like, Phew. yeah, hi, my name's John. I'm an everyday don't give a fuckist. Uh, and... Uh, what else does she do that's fucked up? Oh, here we go. <laughs> she does it's fucked up. Um, she comes over to my housemates, little nitpicky comments about how I can improve it. You know, last summer we had a barbecue for Father's Day. I'm out in the back grilling. My wife goes and, you know, brings my dad and my stepmom through the house. She gets first step into the backyard. She's like, <laughs> you know, John, you really ought to prune your tree. Okay, like, hey, you know what, Mom? You really ought to trim your bush. <laughs> Come on, people. This is Lanny's. 
<laughs> really? It was supposed to be disgusting tonight. Wait till my last joke. You're really going to flip out. Good God. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. Um, anyone here familiar with L.A., Los Angeles? Anyone from there? Okay, well, hopefully I don't come off as a big liar. Um, because, um, you know, despite being from Denver, I don't always have a good affinity for the uh, Spanish language. And so, you know, like 20 years ago, I was in L.A. for my first time. And I heard uh, La Cienega was a good boulevard to go up and down, north and south. Yeah. And, and, but I like, I like to go to the gritty parts of the town. So, you know, so, I, so, I, so I'm looking for La Cienega. Like I said, it was 20 years ago. You know, no GPS. I don't have a map. So, you know, I pull over and ask a guy for directions. Guy happened to be black. And I go, excuse me, can you uh, lead me to La Cienega Boulevard? Yeah, he's like, excuse me? I go, can you lead me to La Cienega Boulevard? He punched me in the face instead of giving me fucking directions. Fucking Californians. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Um, you all happy with that election? I was happy the Hickenlooper. I voted for Hickenlooper. Because, yeah, it's two things. A, he's pretty fucking competent. And B, he will be, uh, out of the 50 governors, he'll have the goofiest name by far. So that's nice to have. And so, you know, day after election, I got this Snoopy German neighbor. Her name's Liesel. She came over from Germany in the 60s. She's like six, 69 years old. She thinks she's my third parent. And so I'm walking by. Uh, John, John, did you vote in the election yesterday? Yeah, I did, Liesel. I did. Did you vote for Hickenlooper? Yeah, I did. Oh, well, you should have voted for Tancredo. Why is that? Uh, because you're Italian. You're Italian. Sorry, got out of my Liesel voice. <laughs> <laughs> you're, Ital you're Italian, you should have voted for Tancredo. I go, no, he's a nut, I'm not going to vote for him. And by that logic, by the way, Liesel from Germany, you would have voted for Hitler. <laughs> also, if you use that logic, all brainless women will vote for Sarah Palin. We got a lot of Palin fans here. Oh, thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, wow, Palin fans at Lanny's, I'm shocked. Um, you know, and uh, into the holiday season we go, so I can tell you about Thanksgiving, dysfunctional family I got. Um, actually, I'll just tell you what they do more than who they are. Uh, my, my mom and my stepdad have gotten into wine, and uh, they bring a bottle over, and the label is called Menage a Trois. Have, any, have you heard of this shit? This is a real, that, they serve it? You've got to be kidding me. I, and no offense to you, ma'am, you laugh at me a lot, so I love you, but I'm going to tell you, it's a very average wine with great marketing. But, you know, when they, when they bring, and everybody likes it, but I'm just saying it's not that incredible of a, uh, of a wine. I love you still, though. You've been very nice to me. They, they bring that wine. They put it on. Everyone's like, menage a trois. Ooh, menage a trois. They get all giddy about this name like it's racy and edgy. You want racy and edgy? I'm your marketing guy. Introducing from the necrophiliac vineyards. We have just come out with a wonderful, it must be that time of month. Heavy flow Merlot. <laughs> right down the, the, right down the uh, road from them is the uh, douchebag wine cellars. And uh, this fall, they came up with a fine two in the pink, one in the stink rosé. Yeah, it tastes terrible, but the bouquet is wonderful. <laughs> that is my time. Thank you for your patience. John Carelli! John Carelli! Very nice! He puts the ass in classy nightclub. <laughs>